Chemists use valence bond theory, and especially the concept of orbital hybridization, to answer a fundamental question. How do the shapes of the molecules we observe arise from the orbitals of the isolated ground state atoms that bond? The hybridization concept proposes that in the molecule, the orbitals of the central atom have mixed mathematically and become hybrid atomic orbitals. New wave functions with different electron densities and spatial orientations. Let's begin with the simplest case and see how the theory accounts for a molecule with a linear shape. A key point to note is that the number of atomic orbitals that mix always equals the number of hybrid orbitals that form. Here, two different atomic orbitals, one 2s and one 2p, mix mathematically to become two identical sp hybrid orbitals, each with one larger and one smaller lobe. The two orbitals face in opposite directions in the atom. For clarity, we'll show hybrid orbitals in this simplified form. First, we'll use box diagrams to depict hybridization and consider the central beryllium atom in the linear molecule BeCl2. The isolated Be atom has filled 2s orbital and three empty 2p orbitals. In the process of hybridization, the 2s and one of the 2p's mix and form two sp hybrid orbitals. The two electrons from the 2s become distributed into the sp orbitals, one electron each with parallel spin. The two other 2p orbitals remain empty and unhybridized. Here is the same process in a box diagram that shows orbital shapes. Putting these ideas together, we can imagine the hybridization process for BeCl2 is something like this. The isolated beryllium atom, with its filled 2s and empty 2p's, is shown with the small box diagram above. The chlorines have three 3p orbitals, but will fade out the ones that are not involved in bonding. In the molecule, beryllium has undergone sp hybridization. The half-filled sp hybrid orbitals overlap the half-filled chlorine orbitals to form two BeCl covalent bonds that are 180 degrees apart. From here on, we'll show electrons within orbitals as dots. To account for molecules with a trigonal planar shape, such as boron trifluoride, the model proposes that the ground state boron atom undergoes sp2 hybridization. The filled 2s of the central boron mixes with one half-filled and one empty 2p to become three half-filled sp2 hybrid orbitals. Boron's third 2p remains empty and unhybridized. Here's an orbital depiction of the ground state boron with filled 2s, half-filled 2p, and two empty 2p's. The fluorines have half-filled 2p orbitals. In BF3, the boron atom is hybridized, with the three sp2 hybrids pointing to the corners of an equilateral triangle. Boron and fluorine orbitals overlap to form three BF bonds 120 degrees apart. To account for the millions of molecules with tetrahedral shapes, the model proposes that the central atom undergoes sp3 hybridization. For example, in the carbon of methane, the filled 2s, two half-filled 2p's, and empty 2p mix and become four half-filled sp3 hybrid orbitals. The model describes bonding in methane this way. In the molecule, the carbon's four sp3 hybrid orbitals point to the corners of a tetrahedron. The H orbitals overlap them to form four CH bonds that are 109.5 degrees apart. For other shapes within a given electron group arrangement, the model proposes lone pairs in one or more of the hybrid orbitals. For example, the trigonal pyramidal shape of ammonia arises when the 2s and the three 2p's of the central nitrogen mix and become four sp3 hybrid orbitals, one which is filled with a lone pair. 
Here, we visualize the nitrogen atom undergoing sp3 hybridization. One of the tetrahedrally oriented sp3 hybrids is filled with a lone pair, and the H atoms overlap the other three to form three NH bonds. In the case of water, with its V shape, the model proposes a situation similar to that for ammonia. The 2s orbital of the central O atom mixes with its three 2p's and becomes four sp3 hybrids, but now two of the hybrid orbitals are filled with lone pairs. In the water molecule, the oxygen has undergone sp3 hybridization. Two of the sp3 orbitals are filled with lone pairs, and the H atoms overlap the other two to form two OH bonds. Carbon is most commonly at the center of a tetrahedral grouping of single bonded atoms, but it also occurs at the center of a trigonal planar grouping that includes a double bond. Consider the carbon-carbon double bond in ethylene. Valence bond theory proposes that each carbon undergoes sp2 hybridization. Its filled 2s and two half-filled 2p's mix to become three half-filled sp2 hybrids, and the fourth electron occupies the unhybridized 2p. Let's examine the orbital view and highlight the two ways carbon orbitals overlap to create a double bond. Here, each carbon is undergoing sp2 hybridization. Note how the unhybridized 2p orbitals lie perpendicular to the trigonal plane of sp2 hybrids. The two sp2 orbitals facing each other overlap end to end. The bond they form is called a sigma bond. It is symmetrical along an imaginary line between the nuclei and is not weakened by the rotation of one atom with respect to the other. Now, focus on the two parallel 2p orbitals. By substituting accurate representations of 2p orbitals, you see that they can easily overlap side to side. This results in a pi bond, one that is not symmetrical along the line between the nuclei. Most importantly, it is weakened and in fact breaks by rotation of one atom with respect to the other. Thus, a double bond consists of one sigma and one pi bond. In the ethylene molecule, four H atoms overlap the four other carbon sp2 orbitals. Recall that in molecules with more than four atoms around the central atom, such as phosphorus pentachloride, the central atom utilizes d orbitals to expand its valence level. Hybridization accounts for the shapes of these molecules as well. In the ground state, phosphorus has a filled 3s orbital, three half-filled 3p's, and five empty 3d's. In PCl5, the 3s, all the 3p's, and one of the five 3d orbitals mix to form five half-filled sp3d hybrid orbitals. The other four 3d orbitals remain empty and unhybridized. Here is the ground state phosphorus atom with the four 3d orbitals that remain unhybridized omitted for easier viewing. We'll move back to see the hybridized p atom in PCl5. The five sp3d hybrid orbitals point toward the corners of a trigonal bipyramid and half-filled 3p orbitals from five chlorines overlap them. Sulfur also has an expanded valence level in many of its compounds. In the ground state, it has a filled 3s orbital, one filled and two half-filled 3p's, and five empty 3d's. In the octahedral molecule sulfur hexafluoride, the 3s, all of the 3p, and two of the five 3d orbitals of the central s mix to form six half-filled sp3d2 hybrid orbitals. The three unhybridized 3d orbitals remain empty. Here you see the isolated sulfur with 3s, 3p, and the two 3d orbitals that will become hybridized. 
In SF6, the six SP3D2 hybrid orbitals point to the corners of an octahedron, and half-filled 2p orbitals of six fluorines have overlapped them.